I'm working on a self-healing mat. This is Strathmore 400 series drawing paper. You should use whatever paper you like. I have a paper trimmer. Um, well, actually it's a rotary cutter, but it's dedicated towards paper. You can see I wrote paper on here so I don't use it for my fabric. And I have a big quilting ruler. Basically the idea is I wanna cut my paper down to the size that I need. My book is gonna be three by five, and it's gonna be like this, meaning this direction is three, and this direction is five. Now you can make your book any size, which is why I'm showing you all of this sort of how-to information rather than just giving you information on exactly how to do it. So for my inside pages, you have to consider that these are essentially, right, they're double this. So if this way was three and three, this now equals six, this distance is still five. So that's pretty easy enough. So now I know I need to cut all my paper to five by six. If you've never used a rotary cutter and a quilting ruler, I thought I would just show you. So basically I can see through the ruler, right? So this is the six line. And then also I can line it up this way to make sure that it's 100% right? Absolutely right. Then I'm going to unlock my rotary cutter just by clicking on the button. You squeeze the handle, the blade comes down, and then by pushing on the other side, I lock it, and this way I can't accidentally cut anything. It's really important to be safe with your rotary cutter. So I unlock it, I pinch it, I push it up against this. Notice how my hand is pushing down quite a bit on the ruler to make sure that it doesn't slide. Slice. So now I have my four inside pages. Now that you have your inside pages, you wanna go ahead and pick some paper for your cover. So here's a piece of paper that I stamped. Um, this is one that has some mono printing. This is a little um, collage that I started and never finished. Um, this is some painted Duralar. So it, it looks like uh, acetate or something, but it's paintable so you can see how one side is not shiny and the other side is. It's pretty cool stuff. So you just need to pick whatever you wanna use for your cover. Uh, I actually, I think I'm going to use the painted Duralar. I like to pick something that is a little heavier and more durable than these um, papers. So I'm going to cut this down to the same size as these inside pages. So it's going to be six by five. So you'll notice that I cut off a little bit of each edge. And the reason for this is when something's painted, sometimes it doesn't go all the way to the edge. So I find that by cutting off a little piece, I get the cleanest, best looking piece that I can, which is hopefully what this is. This is a nifty little thing called a scoreboard. And what it does is it allows you, so I have a three and a three, and then this little thing has a channel in it, which goes down this metal edge. And you can see it creates a crease for you. And then you fold towards the crease and you've just got a beautiful, oops, fold that leaps out of your hands. But not everybody has a scoreboard and that's fine. Um, something that works equally as well, just different. This is a piece of fun foam. And then I have my paper and I have my ruler and I'm gonna measure three inches in because that's the center point, right? So three inches, there you go, make sure it's straight. Take my bone folder, and run it a couple times with some pressure. You can see there's the crease. And again, you can fold it and it's a nice crease. So, you know what I mean? It's personal choice or just like what you happen to have around. I just find it since I own a scoreboard, it's just quicker and faster for me to do it this way, but it works just as well either way. So I'm gonna go ahead and just finish scoring all of my pieces, including my cover. We can see that the Duralar doesn't really want to be scored. So I'm just using the bone folder to push it and now it's fine so i'm going to layer one into each other all of my pieces you can see like that right